Hey, what's up guys? Justin with AmericanMuscle.com and it is my absolute favorite kind of day. Why? Well, first things first, as you can see, we're at our local strip, Maple Grove to be exact. And secondly, I have my brand new 2019 here with about 500 miles or so. So you guys can go easy on me from ripping on this thing. It's nice and broken in now. And we are here to do some testing. What are we gonna do? Well, first things first, we're gonna run this thing completely bone stock. I mean, stock all seasons in the rear, 93 octane in the tank, no tune whatsoever, and just see where the car sits. From there, we're just simply gonna switch out those stock Goodyears in the rear for a drag radial. See the difference, if any, between tires. And then from there, guys, we're really gonna start diving into things. We're gonna do a 93 octane tune from our friends at Lund Racing using their N-Gage device. And then we're gonna drain that 93 out of the tank, put a few gallons of ethanol in this, and pair it up with Lund Racing's E85 race tune. So I'm excited to see how this thing will perform. I say it's time to get this thing in the line and see how she runs bone stock. All right, we'll see how she does on street tires here. Got them aired down to about 26 pounds. All right. Felt like she hooked up pretty good with the old trusty Goodyear all seasons. Got it up to about two grand on the converter and just basically put it to the wood. That was stock calibration again, stock tires in drag mode, advanced track off. We're actually gonna pull this thing through the scales real quick because I've never weighed it. And honestly, I'm curious to see just how portly this thing is. All righty, right there. 4025. 4025, she's a big girl. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Again, these things aren't light. I had an idea of how much they would weigh, and this thing is pretty trimmed out. I even still have my daughter's booster seat back there. And with me in it, it's 4,025 pounds, so about 200 pounds, give or take, depending on how much Chipotle I've had. So about 3,800 pounds for the car. Damn, the thing went 12.1 at 117. Wow. That's really impressive, guys. Again, completely stock car, stock all seasons. Maybe we'll run it back one more time, see if we can't get a little bit more of a 60 out of her. Uh, let's see what that 60 is like. A 2060, which is kind of poop, but again, these are the stock Goodyear all seasons on there. But overall, first pass of the day, 12-1 at 117. Again, just goes to show you how healthy these 18 and 19s are with that 10-speed auto in place. This thing's moving. didn't leave as hard. I think I don't think I built up enough RPM on the launch. I tried a little trick that John Jr. told me to use uh, from Lund Racing. He said, build up as much RPM as you can just on the pedal alone, on the brake, and then once you feel like it's starting to push through that, grab the e-brake and try to give it a little bit more RPM. I felt like we got a little bit more, RP uh, a little bit more mile an hour at this time based on my own calculations, let's see. Whoa, 1190 at 117, awesome. Here I am thinking it went slower, wow. I'm glad we ran it again. That's awesome. Gosh, these things are so incredible. 11.9 bone stock, stock off season. Wow, how about that? 11.90 bone stock. I didn't think we'd get there. Let's see what that 60 foot was like. I got into a 1.9, so there it is. Improved on the 60 by a tenth, tenth and a half, and as a result, 11.90 at 117.9. Completely stock. Stock Goodyear all seasons. Damn, these things are impressive. Oh, you win auto. Well, now you see why, right guys? These things are just so impressive and the performance is gonna be very repeatable. So now we're gonna bolt up those drag radials, leave the calibration stock just to see what, maybe if we can do a little bit better on that 60, I think we can. And then we'll have fun start tuning this thing. Look at that, 1190, that's awesome. All right guys, here we go with the drag radials in place. Again, stock calibration. Radials are about 20, 21 pounds. Try to give it a little bit more gusto on the launch here. Huh, kind of fell on its face. I don't know what that was. Didn't like something. So the car left all right. It could have used a little bit more RPM, but then when it hit second, it felt like it was traction control related, like something wasn't happy. So 
What I'm gonna do now is basically unplug the dyno plug that we usually use at AM when we wanna dyno a car. The electronics on these things are so advanced anymore that even with the advanced track turned off completely, sometimes it still likes to get into those nanny modes and play with you a little bit. So I'm just gonna eliminate that from the equation 100%, rerun it with the radials and hopefully have a better experience. Oh, you know what it was? I kid you not, the mileage on the car at the pass, at the time of the pass, was literally 666. It's 0.6. Ah, felt like the launch got a little bit slower. We'll get it back, we'll let it cool off a little bit, and I think it's time to flash this thing and have some fun. So the car just really isn't picking up anything with the radials. Honestly, uh, we were all surprised how well the Goodyear's performed for a stock tire and it went 1190s, so that's awesome. Thought the car might pick up a little bit in the 60 with the radial, but it's just an eighth mile times down, mile an hour's down, so we're hot lapping this thing. So it's just, it's not gonna get me faster with the stock tune. So right now I'm basically uploading the 93 octane tune from Lund Racing. It's actually their flex fuel tune. And the beauty of that is you can use 93, you can use 85, you can use any mix of the two in the car will adapt based on using the O2 sensors and things like that. I'm not expecting to see a huge gain with 93 octane to be quite honest with you, but once that E85 mix gets into the party or the E85 tune I should say, we should be seeing some substantial gains. I'm thinking a mid to a low 11, hopefully. Not a bad day though, we're at the track. Well guys, I'm gonna go against conventional wisdom here while this thing is flashing and actually put the stock tires back on. Why? Well, honestly the car just flat out perform better with them on so far. I don't know, I'm just gonna go with my gut feeling on this. Now I might regret that once this thing is tuned and it's making more power down low and all those torque reductions are turned off. I'm gonna go with my gut, hopefully I'm right. We'll rerun it again once the tune flashes for the 93 octane and see if we can pick up on that 11.9. Better 60 than one eight. That's my best 60 of the day, but we went the same time. So a little bit quicker amount of hours, but overall my car definitely feels a lot healthier. It feels good again. It feels a lot stronger than it did with those radials on it. I'll tell you that. Let's do it again. Come on, baby. All right, so I mean, to me that felt like it was gonna be in at least an 1180. It just felt like the car was moving out of the hole, but it was another 11.9, but 118 mile an hour is a little bit better this time. It's consistent. I mean, listen, we're hot lapping this thing and it's going back to back 1190s with the 93 octane tune on the street tires. So at this point, I say we drain the rest of that 93, upload our E85 tune and uh, see how she does. Right now we're popping off the engine cover here. We're trying to gain access to the rail, uh, to the feed and we're gonna do a little trick to drain the 93 octane that's currently in here, thanks to John and uh, the team at Lund Racing. They basically sent what's called a, a, a tank drain tune. Basically, you just flash it like any other tune, but you gotta be ready because the moment that thing flashes, it's gonna kick that pump on, so you have to have your setup ready to go. So that's what we're gonna do. Disconnect the feed here. We're going to show you our crude little setup, and then um, we'll flash the tune and start getting this 93 out. We just flashed the tank drain tune, and uh, again, we have our S197 pump in line, about four feet of hose, and we are currently, as you can see, filling up some gas here. So we're gonna get this thing pretty much bone dry as we can, dump a couple gallons of ethanol in it, let it run, get some of that 93 out of the system, pop it off with some more ethanol, according to Lund, and then uh, we'll let her eat. This is great. So we just uh, flashed the E85 race tune from Lund. We filled up with it, I'd say maybe five gallons of ethanol, and then we're about ready to make our first pass. Definitely felt a little better. The thing felt like it ripped. We'll have to see how she did, but we'll definitely run it back and uh, see what those numbers are. 
Yeah, we just made our first pass on ethanol, E85. I went 1180 at 120 with a 1960 foot. So not my best 60, but the car already picked up about a tenth and a half in about two, two and a half mile an hour. First hit off ethanol. So hopefully we get this thing into 1170. Little wheel hop off the launch. I felt like we probably got another mile an hour or two out of it though. Just due to the spin. The thing's definitely ripping. Let's see. All right. 1174 at 120. There you go. We're getting faster. 1174. That's deep in the 1170s. 120.9. So we're almost 121. Chipping away at the ET. 60 foot is still junk, 1.9, 60 foot with these all seasons. I'd say let's run it one more time and see how this thing does. Maybe we can improve a little bit more. Sound good? Let's do it. All right, guys, again, just a little haze with the street tires. We're not doing any John Force burnouts out here with an all season. There's no need. Just clean them off, get a little bit of heat in them. That might be it. We shall see, but that might be a little quicker. It definitely didn't spin as hard on the launch. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how we did. Come on, baby. Yeah! All right. 1166 at 121. All right. Gosh, this is fun. See, you can have fun in an automatic. Why? Well, because you take some of the driver inconsistencies out of it. And yes, I know that's an easy way of saying, well, learn how to drive better. But honestly, guys, it's a great way to work on your technique, work on your setup, and improve your ET. So I like it, I'm having fun, that's what it's all about. Well, guys, the car just went the fastest it's went all day. It's 1160 at 121. We finally got that 60 down into the 1.8 with the all season. John kind of said, he's like, you can try this. We've had some luck with it in the past, but yank the panel filter out of the airbox and they've seen as much as like a half a tenth out of it. So we'll try it. You know, it'd be great to get this thing down even further, maybe kiss an 1150 and we'll see. But so far, all season 1160s, tune only, ethanol. I'm, I'm happy, this thing is ripping. shall see. She left hard though. Come on, baby. 50. Ah, 63. Oh, well, I say we call it there. All right, guys, so we just finished up with our last pass of the day. DA is 1,200 feet currently, 63 degrees. So it certainly got worse throughout the day, but we ended up making our best pass of the day. 1163 at 121 with a 1860 foot time. So very, very impressive out of an otherwise stock car with a tune and different fuel. Now bone stock again, high 1190s, very impressive in its own right. With that 93 octane tune, the car went a little bit faster, but again, ethanol tune, still stock all season tires. We tried the radials, but it turned out we didn't end up needing them. This thing was never really traction limited. So they only ended up hurting us in the long run. So guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. It was certainly a lot of fun for me and be sure to stay tuned because you know we're gonna be doing more stuff with this car very soon. But in the meantime, I'm Justin, thanks for watching. And for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.